So we just thought we'd share a little bit this evening um, with you about what's on our heart, about love, about healing, about relationships, about friendships, and then um, have some time for Q&A if that sounds good to you. But we thought it might be good to just talk about a little bit about ourselves and kind of how we became friends and kind of how the podcast started. So, whenever you want to start. Yeah. Heather, is that all your pile of stuff that you're taking back to Canada? <laughs> Listen, I have been out of the house for a long time. <laughs> oh my gosh! She's like, stop! I was like shopping stuff. I'm in. Mean, I'm up for it. Just like a gerbil. Like, <laughs> I also have two girls that are 14 and 18, so you know they're going to take all that. Like, I might get one thing out of this like, at the end of it. Um, yeah, we've been friends for, Michelle, we've been two friends for probably 23 years. We're a little bit old when I say that. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. She's much guys. older than me, <laughs> you, but, but I like her. Um, so we met at university when we were going to Franciscan University. And we were, I mean, Michelle and I are probably complete opposites in many ways. And, and I opposite. get such a kick out of her and, and just how different we are. Um, but there's some things that are very much the same, like our passion for God, for the faith, um, for people. We just have a big heart for people. And so this little firecracker got in my face one day and was like all excited about what God was doing. And I was like, Whoa. like I'm like <laughs> just more of an introvert, <laughs> a bit more shy. But I was like so captivated by her passion, and that's what kind of drew us together. And then we just started praying together every now and then, and just kind of like God became just a part of our journey as we started to experience life together, and you know, boyfriends and Husband, husbands. Husbands. Like I bought Michelle's plane ticket to go meet Chris Bensinger because I was like, this boy loves you. He's and he's cute, Michelle. <laughs> I was like, get down there and meet him because she was like. I don't know if I'm going to go. And I was like, you know, sometimes girlfriends just need to, you know, speak the truth, right? I was like, get down there and meet that boy. <laughs> and 20, so, 20 years later and 20 six years kids later, later right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so we really have been able to journey with each other through a lot of highs and lows, even though when we were at Franciscan University, that was the only time we ever lived in the same place. Mm -hmm. So I think when God bonds people in friendship, it goes far beyond like what normal things can sustain. Like he really has been able to sustain us. And then like it just, you know, friends of friends. And then all of a sudden this little nun was coming up to visit. And um, my husband was saying, yeah, I don't know who she is. You know, some nun, this is like 12 yeah, years, 12 years ago, ago, probably, yeah. Or something like that, yeah. And so she was kind of, I was like, well, she doesn't have anywhere to go, poor little nun. You know, she, like, I'll make her lunch. Like, if she wants to hang out here, if that's not awkward, like, she's welcome to come over. And Sister Miriam walked in the door, and I was like, who's that girl? Like, she was like, and then she started talking, and I think within, I mean, probably 15 minutes, we were spilling our guts to each other. It was just like yeah. this, I don't know. It was just, it just felt, it was, meant, it was magic. Yeah. It was meant to be. And, and then... The three of us met. Of course, it wasn't before long that I was like, Michelle, you got to bring Sister Miriam down to do some women's retreats with us. And that was just a fast friendship that, that happened very quickly. God bonded us very quickly. So even though we've been apart the last year and a half, our hearts, I feel like, have been very close. At least mine has been close to you. Yeah, you guys? of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, of course. Okay, I just wanted to say that publicly. Okay. <laughs> you want to talk about your friend? Yeah, your but it was an interesting because we were living, my husband and I and our kids were living up at um, one of the camps that Life Team runs up in North George Mountains. We ran um, Hope Crest, the mission program and all of that. And we started a women's retreat there. So I would bring Fly Heather in from Canada on my team's um, to do this women's retreat, and she's like, I have this religious sister, we should, because I told her, I was like, everybody would love to have a religious sister, and I was like, do you think she's a good speaker, and um, Heather was like, oh yeah, I think she'd be pretty good, this is before like, sure, right. Sister sure. Marion became <laughs> Sister Mary. Um, this is before Focus and all the other big speaking and whatever, so she came in, and it was very similar, like, we met, and it was just... Like, we were telling things that you just don't tell people that you just met. You know, we were spilling our hearts. But then I watched her preach, and I'm like, and I will not forget, I went home to my husband and said, that um, Sister Mary will not be a secret for long. I mean, because there was such a power and a vulnerability to her speaking. And to have a religious sister, a bride of Christ, speak with such passion and heart uh, for the church and in the church, I was like, this is something that the church has been missing. And she it really is the heart of the church person, you know, personified. 
and her. Mm -hmm. And it just, we actually ended up doing that event together two or three or four years. And that's actually part of the reason the podcast was born out of us ministering together mm -hmm. in that way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, sister? Yeah. I think, how many of y'all have some really good female friends? Some really good female friends, okay. How many of y'all think female friends can be really challenging at times? Like female, <laughs> just, it is hard, isn't it? And I think there's a lot of things that happen. There's a lot of dynamics that go into it. And um, how many of you would, would agree that real friendships take work? Like real friendships take work. And I think, especially as you, as you become adults, a lot of times at school, like you have instant friends, kind of like you have homeroom and you have different classes. And then sometimes you go away to college with your friends. But when you get older and you become adults, you really have to decide, you know, where your friends go, you will go. Guaranteed. So whatever your five closest friends are doing, you eventually will most likely do too. And so I think especially as we become adults, to really choosing, and even now, choosing, like, who do you want to spend time with? Like, who's investing? Who are you? Who do you want to invest in? And who's willing to invest in you? Because friendships are a two-way street. And we all have friendships. Like, there's circles of friends. We all have friends that, you know, by nature, we, we pour a little bit more into them than they do it to us. And that's okay to a certain extent. But our really close friends, it's reciprocal. Mm -hmm. Somebody that has really earned the right to hear our story. Somebody that loves us. Somebody that we can be honest with. And I think those kinds of friends, even though friends change over the years, but there's certain people that God brings into your life that are, are really lifesavers. And I'm sitting between two of them for me. Mm -hmm. I can honestly tell you that. Like through this journey of, of my own story and just recovery from addiction and all kinds of trauma that I've had in my life and just where I've been, um, I know that I could tell these two anything and they would love me. And I know they would tell me the truth also. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. And so we as, you know, we don't live in the same state we don't even live in the same time zone a lot of times we're in three different time zones trying to find a time to record <laughs> so and so it does it takes time and it takes work but i think i don't know about you but i think it's worth it i think it's worth it and so i wish when i was younger i wish i wish somebody would have told me how do you choose friends and like what are marks of good friendships and like how do you remain rooted and grounded in love so that you can give the gift of yourself you know um not now but also in the future so we wanted to just also anchor our time with you in scripture and so we wanted to, we were praying about Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, do you want to open yep, that for us? Sure. Do you want to read that to us, Heather? Or I can read it if you want. Just yeah. it to the right side. <laughs> yeah. First step. Uh, yeah. We're <laughs> I have it on my yeah. Bible tabs. <laughs> yeah. And so sometimes I think what happens, especially um, just sometimes when we hear, like, you know, we hear the word of God and sometimes we fall asleep. We're like, oh, I've heard that before. But I just, if it's okay with you, I just want to read this over you, if, if I could. If I could read this to your heart, because I really believe this is the deepest desire of our hearts. Like this is Because all of us want to be rooted and grounded in love. Like, all of us want to be secure. And so much of our anxiety comes from areas where we, we feel deeply insecure. Where we all have questions of, like, do, am I really loved? Like, does anybody really care about me? Is God real? Like, we all have those questions in our heart at times. And so this is St. Paul speaking to us about this reality, right, of who we are and, um, uh, and, and the, the, heart, the heart of God for us. Let's see. Hold on, hold on a second. Let me try to find it. Can you, you want to talk about that for a second? Let me find it real quick. So as she's looking for the scripture, I think it was really good what Debbie said at the very beginning. The, the best and the hardest, or the easiest and the hardest, is to receive. You know, it is to really receive. But I think I'm realizing, like, we laugh because, like, we, we say we're on the journey with you. We always say we are pilgrims in this progress. We are not perfection here at all. You know, come spend a day with me and you'll realize really quick. But with all of that, saying when we are talking about being rooted and grounded in love or rooted and grounded in friendship, you will, we also have to have the language to other people to invite them into our hearts and in our lives. We have to extend an invitation for people like, I need you to be in my heart and walk around in my life. And that leaves us vulnerable sometimes. But I think for a lot of us, we're just assuming what the other person is thinking or acting or whatever. And we actually need that invitation. And it's, I've had to have a lot of um, growing conversations in the last couple of years like, this is how I need you to love me. This is how I need to invite you into this part of my story. Can you be this? Because people can't read your mind, you know? And doing the same thing to the Lord. I really need to experience your love this way because I don't feel rooted or grounded. I really feel um, like you need to increase in this way because I feel really weak in this area. And I think for one of us, all three of us actually, in the last two or three years, we have learned to befriend our poverty 
as a meeting place for the Lord to love us instead of um, despising our poverty and looking at it as a weakness or a liability. So I'm just going to, if I could just pray this for your heart, and just ask that if you even want to close your eyes if you want, but I'm just going to pray this for your heart. And this is really St. Paul speaking to our hearts. So it's Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 uh, to 19. He says this, he says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you, in accord with the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner self, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have the strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I don't know about you, but I want to be filled with all the fullness of God. <laughs> I want that so deeply in my heart. I think you want to talk about Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes we look at, like, love and friendship, and then we say, oh, God, and he's here, and friendship is here, but he is love, right? Like, we know that term, but sometimes we don't put it together that he's the love that we're longing for. And so if he's a part of our friendships, then we're going to be experiencing the kind of love that we're longing for because those friendships are going to be full of him. And um, I think something that I've learned that's so important is to be the kind of friend that you want in your life. And I don't mean that as like, oh, that's a nice little thing to say, but like actually work on being a good friend. If you want good friends in your life, then cultivate the skills and the practical things to be a good friend. And that starts with sitting before God saying, can you fill my heart with your love, Lord, so that I can be your love, you know, to those around me. And what does that look like? It looks like being a good listener. You know, it looks like being a safe person. And I think this is something that's so important now. Like most of us are afraid to be vulnerable with other people. And I I think especially for for younger people who are in high school, especially in high school, those years can be really, really scary because you don't want to be exposed in any way because people can take that and manipulate it and and make things very difficult and use it as a weapon against you. And and I think that's where our hearts get hurt, right? And they get guarded and it's like, well, I I don't want to put myself out there because I've either been hurt in the past or I've seen my friends get hurt when they do that. But when you start small, when you start with one other person, you're like, can we you know, grow a friendship that's based on these things where we can be a safe place for each other, that we're not gonna share things you know, with other people about what's shared here in this friendship, um, that we can support each other and speak the truth, like they were saying. But those things start with us. It starts with us sitting before God saying, God, I wanna love like you love. I really want to, like I wanna be patient, I wanna be kind, I wanna have the fruits of the spirit just like all over how I interact with people. And people will be drawn to that. The more that you love like Jesus loves, of course they're going to be drawn to that. But you will attract people who also want to love like that. And those are the kind of friendships that I think are really going to last. So, you know, as Sister was saying, there's some friendships that, yes, you pour more into than maybe you get back. And that's okay because there's always discipleship friendships and there's friendships where we are called to love more than we are to be loved. But it is important to have friendships where you're on the same page. Where when, when you're weak, they can be strong and vice versa. I think that's one of the things that I've just experienced such a blessing in is that I, I didn't feel like I could be weak. I was always like the strong friend for other people. Um, but with these two, I feel like I really have been able to be weak and that they could be strong for me, that they could have hope for me. You know, when I couldn't have hope, that they would really be praying for me, that they didn't just say, oh, I'll pray for you, you know, but they were like, actually pray for me. <laughs> and and that's, that's, I think, another one of those qualities that if we can offer that to people, um, then we draw in those kind of friendships. Yeah, and I think it's amazing when we pray about that and just like what we were saying, being rooted and grounded in love. And if you've ever heard me talk, probably one of the things that I love is women relationships. And I've been very blessed in my life. I'm just a girlfriend girl. I've always been a girlfriend girl. Like, I loved it. They've always come very naturally to me. And I was very, um, like, kind of bewildered when people were like, oh. Like, I have two of my friends who are like, eh, uh-uh, girls are, no. And they had been hurt deeply by women relationships in their life, where I had not had that experience, maybe because I have a lot of 
physical, biological sisters also. So one of my favorite scriptures is the visitation, is Elizabeth and Mary. And I love just breaking it open. I love teaching about it. I love everything about it. And I love when the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary that she went to Elizabeth first. She went to Elizabeth first. And I love when she greeted Elizabeth and she said, and Elizabeth says to Mary, who should it be that the mother of my Lord? Elizabeth called out Mary's truest identity. Truest identity and what the Holy Spirit was doing in her life. So for us, we have to look for those friendships like, who calls out your truest identity? Like in the last year and a half, I've just been in a deep season of healing and not because things have been wrong, but I told Sister Miriam, it's not things falling apart, it's actually things falling together, which has been different for me. Like, to take a step back, because usually I only do that when, I'm, you know, when I get rock bottom. But like, no, the Lord has actually showed me, like, oh, wow, you can do this when you're in a good place, too, and I heal also, you know. Um, but it's amazing. But in this time, in this season, I've had to have both of them say, okay, what's truth and what's a lie? Because right now, I really want to believe this lie. You know, or right now, I just, I'm failing at this. And you need people in your life to say, all right, this is who God is. This is what the Holy Spirit's doing. And this is who you are. And what is the Magnificat the Lord's asking you to say and sing right now? The Lord's asking for a response, for you to praise him. Can you praise him with me? And I love for each of us that there have been times where um, I think one of the beautiful things about being rooted and grounded in love is that it makes it family, that we are family and that we're communion and that we are gifts to one another and that it's give and take in the gifts. Like for Sister Miriam, she may be a religious sister, but she makes me a better wife and mother, mm-hmm. you know? And vice versa, there's a, you know, a mutual receptivity and giving and that is what the Lord is asking me to ask, the Holy Spirit being the center of these relationships. That's really the definition of friendship. The philosophical definition of friendship is shared goodwill. Do you have a Latin term for it? Sure, I don't have a Latin term for it. It gives no. you <laughs> so you can say it in a different way, right? <laughs> Which still has interesting ways of saying things. English really. is my second language. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so it's shared goodwill. So what are friendships? Aristotle talks about different kinds of friendships, like friendships of use, friendships of, of commerce, where we had like an exchange. But then there's friendships of virtue. And friendships of virtue, he says, are the friendships that last a lifetime. Like these are the ones that really last because it's something so far beyond ourself. And all of us, like we said, have different friendships. Like I played sports for a long time, so I, um, I wanted to work for ESPN. Actually, then, then God interrupted my life, and I'm a nun. Here I am before you. So, um, <laughs> but I, I love sports, and I, so I, I spent years on sports teams with girls and all kinds of like Division One volleyball, just all kinds of stuff. Like I love sports, and you have certain friendships in that, and you know. So you, have, so you have a sports season, or say you play club volleyball or club soccer, or whatever, and so you're, you're with each other like all year round. But then you, after a while, you don't see each other anymore. And I, I am acquaintances with them, but I'm not close friends with them anymore because we didn't have like the deepest kind of, of shared goodwill. And I had friends in high school that I partied with a lot, friends in college that I partied with, friends in middle school that I partied with, okay? And we got into a lot of trouble, <laughs> like a lot of trouble. And those friendships, um, instead of being shared goodwill, were shared destruction in many ways. And you know, I don't know about you, but like when I was in middle school or high school, I was really thin and I had braces and like the boys picked on me and stuff. I'm just tremendously insecure. And you know, when you're tremendously insecure, it's hard to choose good friends too, because you just want to be liked. Like you ever just had wanted somebody to like you so deeply. And that was way before social media. Like y'all, seriously, I couldn't, I I would not have survived social media, TikTok, Instagram, I would have died. Like I'd just be in the corner of the fetal position over there. That's what would have happened to me. Um, Because the pressure is so intense and the, like the um, illusion is so intense. Mm. And I don't, I mean, even as a grown up, like just scrolling through social media at times, you can feel your heart just like sinking <laughs> as, you, as you look at other people's feeds. And it just, and then we start getting jealous. And I think that's one of the things, and we could talk about that of like some of the caveats of female friendships many times is the jealousy. But it's like what, what has happened in this friendship and other friendships that I've had with people that really have shared goodwill, people that really love God, people that aren't really, that really love God aren't weird, they're captivating, they're stunning. Like, saints aren't weird, they're gorgeous, they're beautiful. And like, each of us are so different, but what really does bind us, and I'm not saying this because I'm a nun, I'm saying this because it's true, what really, <laughs> what really does bind us is our belief in Christ. Because there are days we don't always see the same way, we're not always in the same seasons and stuff, but all of us love Jesus. And because Christ is the way, that means there's always a way through. 
And so I, I just, for my own self, it's like, oh, seeing like the, just the different kinds of friendships I have over the years and the ones that really give life, like what's helping me to be rooted and grounded in love are, are friendships that are shared in, in goodness and virtue. And those are the friendships that heal and that last. Mm-hmm. And I think most importantly is, um, you know, our friendship with Jesus mm-hmm. is really the most important friendship from which all other friendships can flow. Because when that's in right order and we're going to Jesus for the things that we need, we don't put those same expectations on other people. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. And, and when we don't have Jesus at the center and we're looking at our friends saying, can you love me the way that only Jesus can love me? Can uh, you fill these parts of my heart? Can you say all the right things? Can you be compassionate in the way that I need him to actually be compassionate? You know, it just puts a weight on a friendship that, that no one can possibly live up to that standard. Although we are called to be Christ-like with yeah. each other and to offer him to each other, it re- we really do need to go to him as the main source of friendship to learn how to be a friend, but to also to be loved by a friend. Yeah. Like Jesus is the friend, the yes. steady friend, like who, who will never abandon us. And I've gone through some times of like where my friends live far away and, yeah. um, and sometimes my friends at home just don't understand my world in the same way, although they're wonderful. You know, it's like you're friends with different people for different reasons. But sometimes my heart feels really lonely, you know, and I've just had to go to Jesus with that. Be like, Lord, can you please just fill all these parts of my heart where I just feel the ache for friendship and the ache to be, um, to be with people, to be with someone. Can you just be here with me in this? And, and there is some hard times like that. I even see that in my girls, like right now, where they're like, it's so hard to just find a friend, you know? Especially in high school, they're like, it's so hard to find people who just want to be good, but fun. Like, not weird, but cool, you know? Yeah. But also love Jesus. They're like, that's a hard mix to find, you know? And I keep saying, just wait, just keep praying for yeah. that, you know? And I, I remember that yeah. too, and I remember praying to the Lord. I was like, I don't, I don't advise this, but I was at a conference, And I had not been living a great life. You know, I was friends with, I didn't have any Christian friends at the time. So we were partying and doing all kinds of other stuff. And I just wanted to be happy and it doesn't justify it, but that's why I was doing all the things that I was doing. And and it really wasn't cutting it for me. I was like, am I just gonna keep doing this like for my whole life? Is this really what I want? And the answer was no. And I knew I had to make some tough decisions Um, But I remember saying to the Lord, okay, like, I'm going to give you one good shot, Lord, and I'm going to stop hanging out and partying with these friends, but you have to send me good friends, because I am not hanging out with my mom and dad every weekend. Like, come on, you know? I love your mom and dad. They're awesome. I actually love my mom and dad. But, you know, when you're a teenager, you're like, come on. Like, I need some cool friends. So, anyway, it was like, really, within a month, um, I had two friends that came back to the church who had kind of been off the rails as well. And, and they just became a steady place for me. And so just pray. You know, if you're struggling with friendships, I just want to encourage you to pray that God would send you a good friend. All you need is one good friend, yeah. even if they don't live with you. You know, you can still Shepherd cultivate something very strong. Yeah, and I was just going to reference that, and that's what I was actually going to tell about Luke. Yeah. And um, one of my sons had a really great girlfriend. He's a senior in high school. Um, and he's cute. He's blonde. He's really I don't know cute. How I produce him. <laughs> Um, really tall. I don't know how we produced him at all. But um, but he was dating a girl, and we really liked her and everything. They dated for a year, and, and I could tell at the end of their relationship, his identity was being based around her. And everything was starting to revolve around her. And so they broke up a couple of months ago, and it was heartbreaking because she was really a part of our family. Like, they did a good job. We knew the parents really well. We incorporated them really well. And But I started to see that his relationship, his identity was starting to become her. And it's very easy to do in these relationships where it's about a boyfriend, you know, and that is who we um, define who we are. That's who we define our worth with. And it was, this is not, is this being recorded? Okay, never mind. Okay, I'm not telling the whole story. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, but for him, just to walk him through this process afterwards, yeah. We had a very beautiful process, like, process my husband and I with it. Because it was heartbreaking, and they broke up, and it was hurtful and whatever. And it was interesting, one of his good guy friends said to him, they're like, this is the best thing that happened to you, mm-hmm. because you lost your voice. Mm-hmm. And your decision started to be her decisions. And we liked her. But one of the really cool things was, is I was telling Sister Miriam about it, and Sister Miriam left him a long message and said, Luke, I don't want you to make the agreement that you're unlovable yeah. right now. I don't, and I don't want you to close your heart. 
and I don't want you to think that you are not worthy of being loved. And this is my fear for you right now. God love him, the poor man. He had like CFRs and religious sisters praying for him. Like, I mean, it was very good. But I think that's for all of us. You know, I think that is for all of us because I think there's places in us that we have been rejected. And I think there are relationships, whether it be boyfriend or good friends or whatever, that we have been severely hurt. And so I think that in each and every one of us, it doesn't matter how old, if we're 14 years old or if we're 48 years old. I'm not 48. <laughs> Just theoretically, if we were, we're not. But if we were, we're not at least two of us. <laughs> one of us is. Uh, she looks way younger than the other two. <laughs> anyway, I depressed. But making those agreements, like we have to bring those, and I think even we are going to have the opportunity to do adoration in a little yes. while, yeah. is to bring those agreements that saying, okay, I'm going to close my heart here, yeah. Lord, because this person hurt me. Will you open it back up again? Lord, help me not to believe this lie that I am unlovable. Or I'm not worthy to have a good friend. And show me the truth of who it is. And Lord, show me what it looks like to have a friendship with you. I love what it says in scripture with Abraham. The Lord called him a friend. And I remember when I first really got into that scripture about Abraham. I'm like, I want to be your friend. Yeah. I want you to call me friends. I want to be trustworthy, Lord. I want, you know, I want to delight in you. And I want you to delight in me. I want to be your friend. I want to be your BFF. I mean, I'll even do the necklaces. But whatever, like, this is what we want. And so that is our heart. So we have this beautiful opportunity in a little while to adore the one that we love and allow him to look back at you and show the delight that he has in you also and where truth needs to come in and lies need to come out. Debbie, do you still, I want to be mindful of our time. Yeah. You, You're great. Okay. Yeah. okay. Just a few more minutes or do you want to do a uh, quick Q&A? Or? No, keep going. Okay. Can they keep going? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Yes, to that effect, I was thinking of because I love, I love, I love both of us. So like the the reality of praying for good friends, like Lord, send me good friends, and Lord, because we can't do it on our own. Like Lord, send me good friends, and help me to be a good friend, because we can't do that on our own either. We have to be able to love the way Christ loves, and that's not something that we can do on our own. So send me good friends, and you know, Lord, where have I closed my heart because I've been hurt? Like, where have I guarded my heart? There's a great, we often talk about this, but there's a great saying in healing circles that says, suffering that is not transformed is transmitted. Mm -hmm. Suffering that is not transformed is transmitted. So that means, my dear sisters, no matter how young we are, any suffering in our life that is yet to be transformed by the Lord will be just transmitted onto everybody else. And we've all experienced the transmission of other people's suffering, and to be quite honest, we've all dished it out ourselves. And so what the Lord is asking of us, and and what St. Paul is saying to us here, you know, I think also tonight we can ask the Lord when he comes with us to ask him, you know, Jesus, where do I need to be rooted and grounded in love? Right? Where have I lost my identity? Where has my identity become social media? Where has my identity become a boyfriend or another friend or a sports team? Or what people think of me, my reputation? Where has my identity become something, oh, this is our family, we're, we're well known, we're wealthy, we're this. Or where has my identity become, here's what they said about me in school. Here's the picture I sent to a guy who said he would never send it to anybody and he did. And now that's your identity at school. And it's one of shame. Right? And those things are not how Christ sees us. Uh, there's a great uh, a pastor. He's a, a, an evangelical pastor. And I, I, he has an old quote that somebody put on social media recently. And he says this. He says, I can't afford to have a thought about myself that Jesus Christ doesn't have about me. I can't afford to have a thought about myself that Jesus Christ doesn't have about me. And I was praying about that on the airplane today. I'm like, man, girl, a lot of things need to go. <laughs> for better, for worse. Because I want, I want to believe what Christ says about me. And that's the, that's, the tr that's the truest thing. Because what is eternal is what is most true. And Christ knows me better than I know myself. I don't know myself totally. But Christ does. And because he's the one who sees us and knows us, he will reveal us to ourselves, dear sisters. We don't have to scratch at ourselves. It's not like Eustace in the Chronicles of Narnia. You know, he becomes a dragon. We don't have to scratch at ourselves. Jesus Christ wants to just gently lift our face. <clears throat> to gaze upon us and to speak the truth to us, and to transform our lives. And that happens little by little. And that's what Christianity is about. It's a complete transformation of the glory. He's so beautiful. I've never met a man so beautiful as Jesus Christ. He's stunning. Yeah, I think what you're saying, sister, that really 
um, sticks out to me in my own walk is like the thoughts in our mind, you know, that there can be a lot going on in here. Do you guys feel that sometimes? Yeah. I almost just want to go, can I, is there a volume that I can just go <laughs> and just turn it right down? Because there can be a lot of thoughts, like a lot of negative thoughts in here, like I'm not good enough, I always get rejected, people don't love me, I'm ugly, I'm whatever. Like, I mean, there's so many, like I have to perform for people to notice me, I have to do this, I have to be quiet, I have to, I'm too much, or whatever it might be. Like there's this narrative, it feels like a tape that's just like, constantly running with all of these negative thoughts or maybe it's about friendships I have to be this way I can't say this I, I can't actually use my voice or have an opinion because then they might not like me or they might they might leave me out if I say something that they don't like and and um, I just think we have to be very careful about that and this is an area that I'm seeking a lot of healing in each day you know I'm like Lord like can you please heal the thought patterns that I have or the things that I believe that aren't true, that you don't want me to believe about myself. Um, and this is an area that I think it's like when we have times of adoration or when we're in a church and we're really before Jesus, like this is the time to come with those things and say, God, just, just come with your truth and your light to like take away all the darkness that's in my mind. Like this is where the battle is a lot of times, is in our mind. It's like a war in our mind. And, and God is the winner of the war. He's already won the battle. We hear that. But it's like when we access that power, when we say, Jesus, I need you to battle for me here because I don't know, even know how to do this. It's like I'm just like so at the mercy of all of these crazy thoughts in my mind. Like he isn't just an idea. He's a real person. Amen. And he has power. And his word has power. And he's the truth. And he's the light. So when we invite him to come, I mean, you could just have that image of like light just pouring into your mind and into your body. And he wants to help transform the thought patterns that we have into the truth. Mm -hmm. So that when we, you know, enter into friendships, we're not just like broken with insecurity about, oh my gosh, like what are they going to say or what are they thinking after I leave or oh, when I said that one thing and you just keep replaying it in your head, like there's all these things that for different people it happens within our mind. And, and I just, I think it's important to note, like our emotions don't have to drive the bus. Like they don't have to drive everything. Like we can even bring those to Jesus and say, I know my emotions are good, Lord, but they're kind of taking over right now. Can you just help to come and bring peace to everything that's happening here? And I think when we do that in our friendships with each other, you will experience transformation. You will experience things going a different way. Um, because God does want to heal us. Yeah. And we all have places that need this healing touch. And I think it's very important, especially as women. Like Debbie and uh, Sister and Heather and I were talking about it earlier. Like my heart is for you. One of the mother, most of all, because I have children that literally are all in your season. Um, except Natalia and Rachel, I'm not that old. Anyway, and so, um, okay, just um, But that the culture has gotten darker in the last year and a half, like we can all feel it. Ever since COVID hit, there, like the political climate, the moral climate, everything, you know, the polarization of our, you know, uh, culture right now is really, really hard. And I think especially for women, it is really challenging. But women in their core are life givers. We give life. That is who we are. As daughters of Eve and Mary's redeemed that, we are life givers in our very core. So like Heather was saying, we have to transform our minds because out of our mind, come, it usually comes out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. What we think yep. usually comes out of our mouth, and we need to be women that are bringing, speaking life in our words and our actions to transform a culture. I honestly believe, and I've said this for a long time, I think the 20-somethings and the teenagers now are really, and this always makes me tear up, I really think you are going to be the church's finest hour. Amen. I honestly believe that. And we were talking, and our good friend Father John Burns, we were talking, he and I did Given Forum, which is a thing for young adult women in Washington, D.C. in June. And I had an amazing opportunity to go to the John Paul II Shrine, which I had never done before. And when I was there, I was, like, it really, like, I really can say, you'll probably, you'll hear a lot about it on the podcast this next season, probably, but I would be able to put that as a, like, a mark in my faith journey before and after I went to that shrine and the Basilica. Like, there was something about it. 
But what I realized is, is that John Paul II's whole pontificate was to bring the church into the new millennium. That is what he wanted. And it says is one of the deepest identities was to bring the church into communio, communion, and really allow the people to understand what a gift they are and to receive that gift. And there's a meditation that I've been, that John Paul II wrote really for me, and I just discovered it, and other people may have discovered it before, but for me, but he was talking about women, and I put this as my line. He says, a long road led me to discover the genius of women, and providence itself saw to it that the time came when I really recognized it and was even, as it were, dazzled by it. I was dazzled by the feminine genius. And I think for us, we need to realize that we are the crown of creation, that we are life givers. And like Sister and Heather were saying, what does it look about look for the creator of the universe to gaze upon us? And then the scripture that uh, Sister read, the next line of Ephesians 3.20 is, he will do immeasurably more than we can either think or imagine. So my dear sisters, let's ask for a measure even more in our hearts, in our minds, in our friendships, in our intimacy with Christ. He's an immeasurably more God. Let's take him up on it. Mm -hmm. That's my job, guys. Yeah, question. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do some questions? Yeah, let me do some. Okay, sure. <laughs> because of you're living in different countries and different time zones. But there's such a sense that they're together. Like I imagine you all sitting at um, Heather's kitchen counter or floating in her pool. Um, <laughs> sorry, that's so subject. I'm talking about your pool. But, um, but the reason we imagine that is because you are together. There's a togetherness in friendship and in your hearts that is reflected um, as you converse and share about the Lord, that's just such a beautiful thing. Um, and so what we want to do is open up a little bit, questions, comments, um, that we can take like maybe 10 minutes, so don't be shy if you have something on your heart that you want to ask, um, since they don't have a call in radio show, uh, this is your big chance, so, um, so go ahead and raise your hand and then um, Rachel bring the microphone to you so we can um, get it on on the video as well. So, raise your hand if you have a question. Nobody has any questions. Oh, all right. <laughs> when did you like find out that you wanted to start a podcast together? I love when you tell us, right? So good. Uh, we had never thought about it once, ever. <laughs> ever. And then I was at lunch with this guy who's a friend, and he, he's been a podcaster for a long time. And I was talking to him about helping my husband get a podcast, and he just kept looking at me going, what about you? And I was like, well, I'm not talking about me. And then I was, you know, and it just kind of kept coming back. And he said, Heather, like, if you were to do a podcast, who would you do it with, like, friend? And I was like, well, uh, we talk all the time anyway. I mean, it'd be the most natural fit. And so he just kept kind of pressing into that. And he said, um, like, I really think you have a voice that the church needs to hear. And I was like, I, I don't do stuff like this. Like, I'm shy. I don't like this. I don't know how to do it. I'm not techie. And he just said, what if I did all of that stuff? And then you'd be left with the real reason why you don't want to do it. And I was like, whoa. Which was just fear, really. At the end of the day, it was fear. Like, I was afraid to put myself out there like that. It just seemed really scary. And so, anyway, I took what he said, and it wouldn't get out of my mind. And I brought it to these two, and I said, like, there was something about this conversation that really hit me. Like, I think we should pray about this. And and one thing led to another, and here we are ten seasons later. Tell me how many downloads we've had. So we, Sister Mary was just saying, we've had um, just over seven million downloads of the podcast, wow. which is clearly... We don't really talk about that a lot because it's so strange to say that. But at the same time, to acknowledge that is to acknowledge that God is doing something here. Because 
who would want to download seven million times just us having a conversation? That's weird. But, but I think the Holy Spirit is doing something. He's doing something for sure in our friendships that we experience, but he's doing something in, in women's hearts. And, um, and when they're meeting together and talking together and having their own group discussions about the podcast topics, that's some of the most beautiful things that we get to hear about. How do you guys determine the topics that you decide to record and put out there? And I'm curious to hear like, from each of you what has been um, your favorite episode to record and why. I decide what they're going to talk about. <laughs> she tells us what to do. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, what usually happens is, I mean, I have to tell you, and, and we... And what I love about the two of them, we decided if the Holy Spirit ever, we, that there's an anointing on this podcast, and if we don't follow the Holy Spirit, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. There's enough noise in the world right now. There's enough noise in the church right now, even so. So, and, the, and I mean, we even go deeper. Like, this next seasons that we will have, we are gonna, it's going to be a little bit different, and we're going to go deeper with our listeners, you know, and because we really want to follow. If it is not birthed out of prayer, we don't want to do it. And if the Holy Spirit's not all over it, I don't want to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we really believe that it is like Exodus where Moses says, if your presence does not go with us, then I will not go. So just because I'm more of the creative and have the more um, mindset, whatever, I'll, we'll put out ideas and I'll do the majority of the ideas and I like to do the quotes and, and I read a heck of a lot. And then we decide, we all come together and contribute and we decide, okay, this is a fit, this is not a fit, and every, we tweak it. You know, so I can throw out the canvas and then we all tweak it to do. Um, favorite episode? Um, mine would probably be the dreaming one and the four women doctors at the church. Yeah. Like, that's been really huge for me even the last couple months of prayer. Like, we, I mean, at some point we would probably go back to the four women doctors at the church and go deeper into it because the church needs a lot of healing. So. What did you want to say? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, Michelle is really gifted at a content. It's one of her gifts. And so although Sister Miriam and I will sometimes come up with ideas and say, hey, I, I really think we should do a topic on this. And Sister Miriam said, I was reading this thing. I really think we should talk about this. It's also just honoring Michelle's gifts. Yeah. You know, we all bring different gifts to the table. This is who she is. And so we want to honor how the Holy Spirit is moving and speaking to Michelle. And also, we don't want to get on her bad side. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, and I would say one of my favorite episodes, well, probably the series we did on the Narnia, the Narnia book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, we did that book, a book study with it, and it was just so fun. It was just so playful, and yeah. it brought me back to my childhood and reading those books when I was like 11 years old. And so, yeah, I love that series that we did. Mm-hmm. Uh, gosh, we've had, we've had a lot of beautiful episodes. I think, I don't know if I have a favorite episode, but I, we've had several episodes where we, it's unscripted, so you're hearing a live like in a sense, like a live conversation unfold. And our editor does very little editing. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know, we have a topic and we have ideas, but we really honestly don't know where the conversation is gonna go. And we've all had deep moments within the podcast where where our hearts are being rocked. And after after we finish the recording, we're all just like silent, like, whoa, Whoa. (laughs) like that was, that was some, you know? And so I think those are my favorite of when the Holy Spirit literally does take over and it just, we're pierced ourselves and we're also like in a state of wonder at times or just like, that's when we know it's not about us. Thank God. It's God is doing something great. Yeah. I think one of the things I appreciate the most is that we all feel like we can sit at each other's feet yeah. to learn and to listen. Like, I'm not threatened by them. I don't feel like I have to compete with them. I can't. Yeah, I can't compete with them. I can't compete with their giftings. But I think we all feel like I want to listen. I want to learn from you. And I think as women do that, when we can drop the competition and just be like, can can we just all like learn from each other and and just honor one another's giftings? Like that's some of the most beautiful moments in a friendship. So, what is the biggest like thing that you think about in our society today with women and social media? Just like the input that a lot of women have with the fact that 
you know, we don't all look the same, and you know, there's a lot of shaming going on in our world today just because of social media and that changes. It's like, how do you like give advice for like, you know, dealing with that and putting other people's opinions and like, stuff like that that goes on in the world? Because I know it's not an easy topic, but it's hard enough. It's a good one. I really think we have to be rooted and grounded in love. Like we have to know who we are, and we have to know like what we're about, and like where our where our hearts are taking us. And so much of what's on social media is not even real. Mm-hmm. How can we compete with something that's not even real? Mm-hmm. Like with all the apps that change your face and your eyes and your breast and your I mean, it's like all filtered. It's all it's nothing about it is real, and it's so easy to take cheap shots at people behind a screen, things we would never say to their face, and it comes from it comes from our own deep. Uh, insecurity it comes from us not being rooted and grounded in love. Because when we're rooted and grounded in love, I don't need to compete. I don't need to do that. Like I can see your beauty. I don't need to, to, to compete with you. I can uphold you. And I think I, I, I know. I, I think a lot of it comes from our own woundedness. I know for myself, I didn't for a long time in my life. I didn't like being a woman. It was from a lot of trauma from sexual abuse as a little girl. Like a lot of trauma, a lot of promiscuity, a lot of self hatred, a lot of being picked on, a lot of making fun of other girls. And I did not like being a woman. And it has been a massive restoration in my life now as a grown woman of coming to receive the gift of my own beauty and to receive the gift of beauty of other women. So I think we have to be very, um, very careful about what we spend our time with, what we spend our time on, and what we spend our time looking at, what we spend our time, our thoughts thinking about. And us being willing not to, I think, you know, just to make a pledge, like, I will not make another girl's life difficult. Mm-hmm. I will not do that anymore. And if you, just because you've done it, you don't have to leave tonight doing that anymore. You don't have to make any snide, snarky comments about other people. Like, we don't. We don't have to do that. Like that's, and I think even something like that just changes, you know, our dynamic of our interior life. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like that's something that I would offer. Yeah. And not even I will not make another life woman's difficult. That's number one. Number two is I will learn how to celebrate other women. Amen. Yep. I will celebrate. Yeah. 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 And I think I mean there is three very unique expressions of womanhood right here. We are all three so different, but we can celebrate one another's differences. And their differences are not, like I think we have to have celebration, yeah. not comparison. Yeah. And that has to be actually like almost like a learned muscle it in has, each yep, of us. It takes time, yep. It takes time. Mm-hmm. You know, like so how are, and I really thought about this. A friend of mine is out in LA and she's a great designer and I love doing stuff with her. But she is really big on, um, she treats, trains other designers, up and coming designers, and she's a very established designer. And I love what she does. She makes her new designers, and like, I look at Elizabeth and all of you that do design, because that's my background too. God love you, because I don't think I could have done art with social media. Like, I would have shut down, probably, because it's hard to see when you can see everybody else's. When I started in school, there was no social media, so I didn't know what someone else was doing, you know, so you couldn't. But she said, for other people, she said, define your why on why you're on social media. Why are you on social media and what are you gonna do with it? And she said, and it has to be artistic and creative and life giving, like define it. This is why I am on social media. This is why I decided to do it and this is how I'm going to do it. So for us, we will be life givers. We will be celebrators. We will be truth tellers. And really hone in on that and then decide, you know, all right, we're gonna be the like, be the change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think it's important. Like for myself, I know I'm a pretty sensitive person, so I have to be careful what I let myself see. Like I can't read the news all the time. It's not because I don't want to be aware of what's going on in the world, but there's just so many hard things and yeah. painful things, and people who are suffering that it will take me down. Like I will just be so depressed about it, you know. And I start to lose hope, you know, I'm like, oh, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, like, you know, all that stuff, like, it could just, you go on a spiral, right, so I think it's partly knowing yourself and knowing what certain things are doing to you, like, when I go on Instagram, it's actually, it's up building, like, I, because of who I look at, you know, I'm, I'm watching what my friends are doing, beautiful art, like, just things that are inspiring, but I know everybody's experience is in that way, so I would say be aware of what's going on in your heart and what's happening, so, like my daughter Maria, one time she was she kept going on this person, other person's like Instagram account to look at what they were doing, and she would just get so fired up about what they were saying, not in a good way. She was like, "Can you believe this? Ah, it just drives me crazy." You know, she's going through the whole thing, and and I just said like, "Seems like it's not probably good for you to look at that person's account <laughs> like every time." You, and you know, you don't always realize it. She was like, 
you're so right. Like I just, every time I look at it, it makes me mad. And I was like, you don't have to look at it. She's like, right, <laughs> I don't have to look at it. You know, so it's sort of like yeah, yeah. just taking some authority back. You can choose yeah. what you look at and what you don't. Yeah. If there's certain people at your school or in your, that, that just, like it just triggers you, to, don't look at it, yeah. you don't have to. So true. You know, guard your heart, look at what is true, good and beautiful. Like what makes your heart be moved to compassion to go outside of yourself and to love another.